Hi, welcome back to the Electronics channel again. This time we've got yet another AV receiver on the bench. This one's a Denon AVR2105. Uh, it's about 10 years old. Uh, belongs to my father-in-law. <laughs> uh, he bought it after my recommendation all those years ago. Uh, it's finally given up the ghost. So we've got no display, no output, just a few LEDs on the front, which kind of suggests that something's powered in there. But uh, yeah, it's going to be an interesting one to, to pull apart and see what it is. So let's get the lid off and see what's inside. Okay, so I've taken the lid off and what's inside is a heck of a lot of dust. <laughs> I don't know if you can see this, but yeah, it needs a bit of a clean. Um, but also there was one obvious thing straight away, uh, the fuse which resides over here by the mains inlet um, has gone. So looking at the schematics, I've got the service manual downloaded of course, uh, looking at the schematic that fuse is in line with the large power transformer uh, and there is a standby power transformer which does power some of the front board features. So that may explain why we're seeing some lights and some functionality there but no power anywhere else. Um, so first thing to do is find out whether it's just a fuse failure just through aging and time or whether there's actually a real problem with this thing. So what I'm going to do is use an old technician's trick. I'm going to replace the fuse with a filament lamp so that will limit the current for me but if the current is not too high it will hopefully allow the rails to come up and we'll see some functionality. Um, if the light glows full brightness and nothing comes up then it suggests there's a high current fault somewhere in the unit. So let's give that a try. So here's a close up of the fuse that's gone. You can see it down here. Just looking behind this boot here. Yeah, it's a glass fuse, but it's got the inside of the glass is coated. Um, so that's definitely popped. Uh, a multimeter confirms that it's now open circuit. So let's pull that out and replace that with the uh, filament lamp. Okay, so let's remove this fuse. Yeah, in case it wasn't clear before. You can see that that's well and truly blown inside. So now we're going to replace the fuse with the lamp jig. So we've got a 100 watt filament lamp in a holder here. We've got it wired up to some crop cleaves with a bit of insulation there. Of course, if you're repairing things like this, then you're going to be familiar with electrical safety already. You'll know how sort of dangerous this kind of procedure is. So please don't attempt these kind of things if you're not familiar with this kind of work. Attach that to the fuse holder like so, and I'm going to run this amplifier off a off an isolation transformer, just for extra safety. And I'm going to ground the chassis as well, just in case anything happens. Uh, and let's see whether the bulb lights up or not. Okay, so I'm using a isolation transformer, which means that the output from this unit is completely isolated from the main supply. Uh, this is a fairly low power one, it's only capable of half an amp, but it's okay for just bringing this up to see if it works. I bonded the ground on to the chassis here, which is a big terminal on the back of this isolation transformer you can use for this purpose. So, let's uh, get you in on the front, see, what, see what's happening. Okay, so we've got a standby light here. Uh, we're going to turn on. Okay. There you go, flashing error sign, and the relay inside has tripped, so you know it wasn't happy with that power up scenario. The fact that the lamp came on at what seemed like full brightness suggests that there is actually a high current fault in here, which is why the fuse is gone. So we'll try that once more. Yeah, so the light just comes straight on, full brightness. The amplifier detects the fault and shuts down again. Okay, so let's move the tracing onto the next stage. So now we need to find out where that high current fault, or that low impedance fault, is sitting. 
there are two main outputs from the transformer here. There's a bundle of wires here, which is the lower power stuff, and then we've got these three here, which are the high current power supply cables and rectifiers and capacitors for the power amp section. So chances are that something's probably gone wrong with this section. The power amps sometimes blow, particularly if the wiring to the speakers was faulty or, or something similar. What I'm going to do is just disconnect this high current input here and then power it up and maybe the low power stuff will come on, maybe we'll get the screen back, maybe we'll have some control and we'll see if that allows the lamp to go out of the back. So let's give that a go. Okay, so here we go with the, the high power secondary of the transformer disconnected. We'll try again. Uh -huh. We have display. It still goes off indicating fault, but the lamp only glowed dimly. So let's just do that again and I'll show you. So I reset the unit, turn it on. See a very slight go of the bulb there. And the unit powers up until it detects that there's no voltage and shuts down again. So that looks quite positive. So we know now that the fault lies in the high power secondary part, maybe in the power amplifier, maybe in the power supply for the amplifier. So we're going to get the multimeter out now and probe some parts in there and see what we can see. So I'm just going to use the diode test range of this multimeter. I've got the mains disconnected so it's safe to uh, probe around in here. Let's have a look what the output of this transformer secondary is seeing. So 0.5 volts, 1 volt. Uh, let's try that around. Zero. So that suggests that the Faster is charging up from the multimeter there. Let's try this side. Yeah. So interestingly, it's showing zero, um, which suggests that the rectifier is somehow broken and is connecting straight through the capacitors. Because the only time you see zero normally is if you try probing an electrolytic capacitor one way, it charges up and your reading climbs up. And you reverse the probes, it shows zero for a while and then starts going up again as it charges with the opposite polarity. So that seems to be the kind of thing we're seeing here. Then it goes down to 0.15 and it's climbing. But if I go the other way, 0.7. So it does appear like we're we maybe have a problem with the rectifiers there. So the other thing we can check is on the power rails themselves, the DC bus side. So the DC bus comes to the power amp section. All the output power transistors on this heatsink are powered from the same power rails from these capacitors. Okay, so we can access the main positive bus and negative bus on the centre pins of these power transistors. So we'll try comparing one to the other. Okay, that seems to be climbing. Looks like what we expect of the bank of capacitors. Let's try that to ground. Yep, still climbing. What about this one? It's climbing again. So it doesn't appear to be any dead shorts from positive to the negative rail or from either of those to the ground connection. So maybe the problem here is not the power amp itself, but maybe it's the rectifiers that have gone. Uh, so one thing we could try doing is putting some power onto this power amplifier from the power supply um, and seeing if we can power this thing up and get some audio out of it. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a bench power supply over here. I'm going to connect the output directly to the positive and negative rails of this thing and I'm going to bring it up on the power supply, see if there's any high current draw there. And if it looks good, we'll turn the unit on and see if we can get any sound out of it. Okay, so I've got the bench supply in place now. We need a dual rail supply, so a positive and negative voltage. So I've set it to seri series mode. I've put a link between the two supplies. So we've got a ground center point. We've got a plus and a minus supply now. I've connected the ground to the ground point on the transformer connector that we were looking at earlier. 
I've got a plus minus voltage, I just need to attach these to the right pins on the transistors that connect connected to the main positive and negative rail bus. And you can see from the diagram here from the service manual that the 2SD transistor is on the positive rail, it's a Darlington transistor output stage, and the 2SB transistor is on the negative rail. So I'm going to look for the 2SD, which is on this side. I'm going to connect the positive to the center pin of that. This is the 2SB device here, so I'm going to put the negative on the center pin of that. Make sure everything's in a reasonable place. So I'm going to plug the thing back in and we'll see if I can bring this thing up without an error message. Okay, so let's say we've got the positive on the centre pin of the 2SD transistor there and negative on the centre pin of the 2SB transistor. And ground is the centre tap or the centre pin of the 3 pin transformer connector. So let's power on the amplifier here. So it's now in standby. So what I'm going to do now is try and bring up the voltage on the power supply. I've got a current limit of about one amp set here. So we're going to see if this draws excessive current as I bring it up. Okay, doesn't appear to be any current at the moment. Just a little bit as you bring the voltage up because the capacitors are charging. So let's take this all the way up to 30. I think the rails on this amplifier are normally about 50 volts. And hopefully the 30 I can get out of this supply is enough to keep it out of protection. So there we go, all the way up to 30. Current looks reasonable. Let's turn it on. Let's see if it gives us the error. No, it stays on. Excellent. Okay. So the indication here, current's not too high. It would seem that the power amp section is fine. So the short circuit that's being applied to the transformer must be in the rectifiers. So let's connect some uh, signals to this and just check we are getting audio out. Okay, so I've plugged an optical input in. I'm not sure which input it's going to be, but we've plugged an optical input into the back. I've connected the speakers to the left and right outputs. We've still got our power amp running at plus or minus 30 volts on here units powered up. So we're going to start up the, the DVD player, find the right input. Ah, okay, it's gone from analog to digital, which suggests it's seeing that input. So it looks like with a bit of luck I've already selected the right input, which is DVD conveniently. Let's see if we can get any sound. go. So it does appear to be working. Uh, it looks like the problem is confined to the rectifiers. So I think what I'm going to do is cut those rectifiers out because they're using two in parallel. I'll cut those out, we'll buzz them out with a meter just to double check and we'll put a brand new high current rectifier in. Okay so here we can see the two rectifiers that are in parallel on the schematic. Um, and the input from the transformer here. So I'm going to cut the legs of these, take them out, and uh, we'll buzz them out and see if they're faulty. Just before I cut them out, I just thought I'd show you the, the right part of the schematic here. So we've got two bridge rectifiers. Here's our input, three pin input connector from the transformer. So from the power transformer, which you can see down here. Those two rectifiers are actually in parallel and connected to the two 12,000 microfarad 63 volt reservoir caps there. So these are the ones we're going to cut out and replace with a single 35 amp bridge rectifier. Okay, so here are the two bridge rectifiers. Let's go back to our meter and check them. So we have 
positive on the beveled corner. So we should see, if we put the negative probe there, and go on the AC, we should see, yeah, half a volt on this one. Half a volt. Okay, and if we try the negative pin, the plus probe, we should see half a volt there and half a volt there. So that one looks okay. Let's try this one. Half a volt there. Ah, there we go. So one of the diodes in this bridge has definitely failed. Let's try the other two. That one's okay. And that one's okay. So we've got one diode in there. There's a short circuit. So basically the one diode failed, the transformer would be effectively directly connected to the capacitor, which would look like a short circuit to the AC signal. Hence the high current flow and the fuse blowing. So let's get a nice replacement rectifier and uh, wire it in. So I raided the spares box and I found this. It's a KB PC2500. It's a 1000 volt, 25 amp full bridge rectifier. So we're going to put this in and that should, in theory, get us back to a fully working state. So let's see. Okay, so in order to have a place to put this rectifier, I've drilled a hole in the back panel, 4.5 millimeters. This is the location for the rectifier connections down here. And I'm going to put an M4 bolt with a shape proof washer on. I'm going to bolt this thing to the back panel. So that'll give me a nice secure uh, rectifier. I can just wire it into the PCB then uh, and also the back panel will help to get rid of any heat that is generated although I think with the size of this rectifier that won't be an issue. Okay so we've got a hole in the back panel here. I'm just going to put a little bit of put a little bit of thermal grease on here. So I don't think this is going to need it. Might as well over here. So back to the back. So the end result of all that is the rectifier is bolted to the back panel. It's all wired into the PCB down there. The DC connection is going straight to the board. The AC connections I've tapped off the uh, transformer wires uh, and just heat shrink those. So that should all be done. So now it's time to uh, reconnect the light bulb and do the power up test. Right, so I've reconnected the light bulb where the fuse is placed. We've got the new rectifier in, so we're going to power it up, see if it powers up okay. I do expect to see the light bulb to flash when we initially power up, because obviously we've got to charge those large reservoir caps on the DC bus. So just because it lights up initially doesn't necessarily mean there's a problem. So let's give it a go. Oh, there you go. Actually, it came straight on when I powered up the mains there, rather than going to standby. So you see the bulbs glowing dimly. Units powered up. So let's give it a go. Let's turn the DVD player on. And let's see if we're getting a signal. There we go. Seems to be working okay. So, what we should see now is if we play some music with a bit more energy content, 
As we turn the volume up, the light bulb should get brighter because we're drawing power from the mains. So let's turn it up and see what happens. Yeah, there you go. It did get brighter. So I think we've proven the repair's okay. I'm going to put the fuse back in and that'll be the last final test. If the fuse survives, everything's good. Here we have a new HRC 3.15 amp fuse, as specified. So I'm going to pop this in the holder. I'm just going to tighten up the tighten up the holder because they do get tired over time. So I'm just going to squeeze them together a little bit before I put the new fuse in. There it is. Okay, so let's go ahead and power up. Still on the isolation transformer. There we go. Brilliant. Success. Okay, so there we go. It was just a faulty rectifier on the power amp uh, power supply section. Uh, we replaced it with a bigger Meteor one just because it's what I had. Uh, so that should be good for a few more years, hopefully. Um, yeah, so that's the end of this repair. I hope you enjoyed this one. It was quite a quick one this time, thankfully. Um, yeah, if you like the video, please like it. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content like this. And uh, yeah, we'll see you in the next time. Bye-bye.